bit over a month ago, I started germinating some avocado seeds in these plastic bags with paper towels. Let's check in on them. Check out those cracks. Four out of 12 seeds have got some fairly significant cracks to them now, which tells me that they have started germinating. But what's actually happening here? Well, I'm gonna go and wash my hands because those green spots on the paper towels are bits of mold. Then let's talk about germination. We're going to be talking about avocado seeds today, but the things we're talking about can be applied to most seeds. When a plant produces a seed, that seed is in a dormant phase. It's as though it's in suspended animation, kind of like Jennifer Lawrence's character in Passengers, at least until Chris Pratt's character comes and creepily brings her out of that suspended state. A seed is dormant because it's waiting for the right conditions to start growing. If it started growing before those needs were met, well, it would not have a very long life. Laying dormant until all of the conditions are correct means that it has a much higher chance of survival. Most seeds can last several years in a dormant phase before eventually growing. This allows them to withstand conditions which are not helpful for growing, and that might include extreme conditions. Some seeds take dormancy to the next level. A team of scientists were exploring some fossil burrows of some prehistoric squirrels in Siberia, and they found some fruit which was probably taken into the burrow by the squirrels at the time. They took the fruit out, they did some tests, and they estimate that the fruit had been there for almost 32,000 years. Due to the burrow's depth and the location on Earth, the fruit had remained frozen that entire time. So in 2012, the scientists took some seeds out of a few of the berries and managed to grow them into plants. It wasn't a conventional germination. They did not just place the seeds in dirt. There were a few other bits and pieces in the mix, but they managed to grow the embryos within those seeds into plants to help them study the plants of the time and the environment of the time, which is, I think, pretty amazing. Most seeds don't have that kind of longevity. Most seeds won't last thousands of years, but they will last several years and will wait until the conditions are right before germinating and growing. So what triggers a seed to start growing? Well, I suppose we could plant them. I suppose we could use paper towel and plastic bags. I suppose we could use water and toothpicks, but what do seeds actually need to germinate? And what actually triggers that germination? Generally, seeds will need three things to trigger germination. And all three of those things need to be present in order to bring them out of that suspended state, causing them to spring into life. And those things are power, wisdom, and courage. I'm joking, of course. That's the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda. But seeds need three ingredients to trigger germination. Let's talk about them now. Well, the first one is water. And water is one of the key building blocks of life here on Earth. It makes up the majority of a plant's tissue and is essential for performing most processes within a plant. So it makes sense that it is one of the key ingredients for germination. When a seed comes in contact with water and absorbs it, it releases enzymes which trigger a number of different processes for germination and growth. It also draws water into its embryo, causing it to swell and expand the embryo, being the baby plant itself. This causes the seed to crack open. In avocado seeds, it's really easy to see this, but this happens in most seeds. Then a baby root will start growing, the baby shoot, and often baby leaves will start growing and emerge from the seed. The two halves of the avocado that you see cracking open are its cotyledons. Cotyledons in many plants are the baby leaves, but in avocados, they just act as the energy store for the plant. 
The second ingredient that seeds need to germinate is heat. And depending on the kind of plant, the temperature needs will be different. Avocados aren't too fussy. They like it to be above 15 degrees Celsius according to different sources that I have seen. I haven't tested this out myself, so that might be something to do in the future. Some seeds require extreme temperatures. A lot of Australian native seeds actually require smoke and fire before they will germinate, which is pretty strange. Uh, and there are also some seeds which require a period of being very, very cold. A lot of stone fruits, for example, if you want to germinate them and grow them from seeds, such as apricots and peaches, will actually need to be wintered or they need to spend some, a fair bit of time in close to freezing conditions before they will germinate when it warms up. A seed wants to germinate at the right time. If it's a frost sensitive plant, it's advantageous to avoid germinating when it's still very, very cold because it's going to damage itself. So waiting until the temperature is right is going to give it the best chance of survival. So seeds need the right temperature conditions in order to germinate. And the third ingredient, and maybe a little surprisingly, is oxygen. Oxygen. You might be thinking, but plants need carbon dioxide to photosynthesize and make energy. And of course, you're right, but plants can't photosynthesize if they don't have leaves or green tissue in order to actually photosynthesize. When they are a seed without any leaves to photosynthesize, they need to get their energy from somewhere else. Seeds are their own energy source, and most of that energy is stored in the cotyledons. That needs to be turned into energy which is usable for the plant. And a chemical reaction is required in order to do this. Oxygen is required for the series of chemical reactions which are needed to turn the stored energy into usable energy. In this sense, plants actually do aerobic respiration, just like we do when we use oxygen to help us to turn our stored energy into usable energy. Oxygen is needed to turn the energy stores in a seed into usable energy to enable a plant to grow before it can eventually photosynthesize. So when we get all three of those ingredients together, we get germination. And as we can see with these seeds, they have those ingredients. The shelf that they are sitting on generally sits at above 20 degrees Celsius during the day and those plastic bags are helping to keep heat in, making inside the bags a little warmer than outside. The moist paper towels providing water whilst not being totally submerged, allowing oxygen free access to the seeds. All of these ingredients have meant that over the last little while they have started germinating. I'm just waiting now to have six germinated avocado seeds to place into six avocado boats on the avocado lagoon, where they will spend the next few months of their development. I imagine that's going to happen within the next month or so, and I'm very excited. Could all this happen in soil? Yes, absolutely. And I have, and I still regularly do so. But growing things in soil hides away watching all of these amazing things happen. Keeping them out of soil for this first little bit of their life allows us to see what is happening to these plants as they start life. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you have enjoyed it and you found it informative. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to Scott Grows and Avocado Tree for more avocado and plant related content. I'm also on Instagram at Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time. What do you see? I see some barbs. Hmm? I need to turn the camera off. How am I going to do that then? Hmm? Thank you for getting comfy on me. <laughs> Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.